Well, another year is coming gone, and uh, while Thanksgiving is early this year, uh, I wanted to sit down and record another Thanksgiving. Uh, this is one of my favorite things that I do on the channel, and if this is your first time seeing one, uh, basically what Thanksgiving is, is just kind of looking back over the last year. It, not, not always specifically pulling from this year, but just telling a story about uh, how games have had a positive impact on my life in some way. I think with how toxic a lot of internet culture, particularly around gaming, uh, can be, I think reminding each other that good things do come out of it and kind of uh, celebrating the positive impact of anything really, but gaming specifically because that's why you guys are here. I think it's important. This last year has been uh, one of the most difficult of my life uh, in a couple ways. Uh, for those of you who don't know much about me, I'm a filmmaker and about a year and a half ago I left my day job and went full-time freelance. Uh, basically doing editing and producing and whatever other work I, I get, basically. Uh, which means that my income is less reliable than, than normal. And so the last year has, in a lot of ways, kind of been a test of my ability to, uh, to make that work. And uh, part of that has been creating things for, for YouTube and Twitch. While I don't really make any money there, it's, it's what I do to stop myself from going crazy uh, when I'm just sitting in my, uh, in, in my, in my room working on things. Uh, because now my home is my office. Because it's such a large lifestyle change, it's meant that I've had to uh, change the way that I cope with things and the way that I structure my life, which has been an adventure in itself. I also uh, am living in New York City, uh, where a lot of people move to and uh, a lot of times eventually move away, uh, whether permanently or just for a while. Um, and as that has happened with two of my closest friends in the city, Gaming has been a way to keep in touch with them. Uh, playing Diablo 2 with, with Colby, or just talking about games in general. Sort of that being how we, how we keep that connection strong has meant a lot. And then while Miles was gone for a few months, we had a routine of... Uh, there, there was a while where uh, several days a week, we were getting up early in the morning and just playing Stardew Valley and running a farm together before going and uh, starting our day, and then just talking about whatever came up at that time. Uh, in insecurities, or things that we were excited about, or stuff we wanted to work on. That was how we stayed connected. Um, and I think the real test of that support system uh, came a couple months ago, when... Uh, I don't want to get terribly into specifics, but there were a lot of sudden uh, health issues in the in my family. Uh, to have somebody that I'm fairly close to be diagnosed with cancer, and then uh, others to be in a in a in a car accident that put their livelihood uh, at risk. Uh, I worry a lot. My mind is constantly running over things when I don't need to, and examining worst case scenarios and it's hard to sleep at night a lot of the time just because I can't stop thinking. Uh, and needless to say, um, these health issues kind of put me in that place and I think the cancer diagnosis more than anything rattled me hard. Just because I, what do you do? So much of it is just, it, it's out of anybody's hands and you're just waiting. There's so much waiting involved. That was, that was the scariest part. Hearing about it, you know, hearing that initial diagnosis is terrifying, but then you just sit with it for weeks or months. And uh, so that was just constantly on my mind. You know, what, what can I do? And, and at, at the time, uh, money was also very rough. Uh, it, it was one of the rough patches. And so not having the ability to just go home and be there um, was really rough. And so what wound up happening was for, for a solid two weeks, I spent a lot of my time playing No Man's Sky. Uh, and what's fascinating about this is No Man's Sky is a game that 
I wasn't particularly interested in. And I think at any other time, I wouldn't have liked No Man's Sky. I, I had played it a bit before, and I just wasn't into it. But then when this happened, I just... I booted it up, and I started just kind of drifting through space and exploring these things, and there was just... it was... it is literally just an endless expanse of busy work to do as you... as you work towards small goals that you set for yourself. And it didn't make me okay with the situation. I think that's something that only time could do, but what it did was it filled that time. There were a couple days where Miles jumped on and played with me, and we just talked about things. I think what No Man's Sky did that was so crucial to me at that time was it created a sort of neutral, safe space. You know, so somewhere where I could have these conversations, either with myself or with somebody else. I was just able to have these conversations without having to be consumed by it. It provided a way for me to be able to explore these feelings in a way that wasn't going to just leave me in depression. It made it painfully clear that this is something I've done my entire life uh, with various games. Because a couple months before that, uh, I was very into Slime Rancher. And Slime Rancher, as well, is a game that deals specifically with isolation. Uh, it, which I thought was fascinating, and it was a game that, that truly focused on isolation, like, as a theme. And not in, not in, like, a horror way, either. You know, usually when isolation is used in games, it's used as a, this is terrifying. Like, you are being hunted by something. It's stuff like Alien, it's stuff like Resident Evil, where being alone means that you're, you're, you're vulnerable. Uh, in a way that means that you're in danger. Whereas Slime Rancher is about being isolated and vulnerable in a way where it's just, it's what you need. It's, it's a game about needing to be alone to think about things. Which I felt was just incredibly insightful. And I think No Man's Sky kind of blends these two things. Because there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of isolation in No Man's Sky. It's literally in the name of the game. And while there's a lot of danger, you know, the Sentinels are after you, there's space pirates, there's all this stuff. Uh, there, there's a lot of conflict. So much time in No Man's Sky is just spent kind of peacefully traveling. And seeing what's around. And it's about the, it's about the wonder of isolation, I think. And I, I don't know if I ever would have appreciated No Man's Sky had I not played it at that specific point in my life. Because it's, it's definitely not something I expected to get that kind of value out of, it wasn't something I ever thought to look for. Because I think it's something that we don't think about too often. And I, it might be because uh, isolation and loneliness is sort of something that we've always been trained to look at as a bad thing. But thinking back to even my childhood, I have vivid memories of uh, escaping into games like Romancing Saga uh, and Final Fantasy X. Specifically those games, I have memories of playing while I was trying to bide my time through something, or while I was trying to wait something out, or just kind of shut out, you know, something bad happening. So for everybody that, that ripped on No Man's Sky, and it's something that I did as well, and it's, at the end of the day, who cares? You know, like, like looking back on it, all that really matters to me is that it was there when I needed some kind of escape, and it was perfectly built to kind of facilitate that sort of... I don't want to say grieving process, but I think in a way I was grieving the the situation. It's still a form of grief, um, even though everything wound up being okay. The two weeks that I spent playing No Man's Sky and listening to Bony Bear because I'm a walking sad boy stereotype, I'm not going to forget that. That, that was one of the most memorable things of my last year. And maybe that's sad, I don't know, but I'm happy it was there. I'm happy Hello Games took this risk on this incredibly ambitious thing uh, that was too big of a job for them to honestly do by themselves, but they, they tried to do it anyways, and they've stuck with it, and years later are still trying to make this into an incredible experience. It's just something that I really admire. It's just that... that dedication to their product. They easily could have walked away from it after that launch. The ability to be a coping mechanism is, is far from like a uniquely video game sort of 
thing. I've done it with books and TV shows before. Uh, but I, I think that there's something to be said for the level of immersion um, and how timeless those experiences can be. I haven't touched it since then. Um, I, ha I have not played it in the months since all that stuff went down. But I have a feeling that if I ever get into that state of mind again, it's going to be super easy for me to just go back and put on some music and drift through space and work out whatever's going on in my head. Thank you for watching. Uh, I know this is a this has been a little unorthodox for uh, for Thanksgiving, but this is what's been on my mind and what I wanted to talk about. Um, if you have any stories, please feel free to share them below or make your own videos. I think sharing positivity is one of the best uses of our time on this planet. So take care of yourselves. Alright, thank you. Bye.